We are on the downside of the summer solstice, a few days past the longest day of the year, the most days of sunlight of the year. And so as we head towards December, we have fewer and fewer hours in which to pack all of our work in the day. And so I thought this would be a great time to give you one of the best time savers I've found when it comes to my workflow for audiobook recording. It's the joys of Positron, and I will share all that with you, plus a six-hour free trial, six times the number of hours that they normally give for a free trial just for you, for paying attention to this, the VO Heroes podcast. Well, hey there, it's David H. Lawrence, the 17th, and today I want to show you Positron, P-O-Z-O-T-R-O-N, what it is is a service that will find all the errors that you may have made and may have missed when you listened back, should you have listened back to the narration that you did for a chapter in an audiobook. It's designed specifically for audiobook quality control, and it's used by narrators, it's used by proofers, it's used by engineers, it's used by publishers, and you can use it as well. And how it works is pretty simple. What you do is you record your chapter or passage, whatever, and then you upload that audio along with the manuscript that you read from, and then what Positron does is it compares the two and then produces a list of any errors that you may have made. And not just a list, but an actual marker file that you can bring back into Audacity, and it shows you right where you need to make the uh, the corrections. So it's really great. Let's show you how it works. So I'm in Positron right now. And by the way, don't go to Positron.com just yet because at the end of this, uh, I'm going to give you a link that will take you to a very special uh, page that they've created just for me and my clients that will give you six hours of free Positron use rather than just the one hour that they normally give as a trial. So to get started, what we want to do is create a new project. And this is usually the title of the book that you're working on. I'm currently working on a book called Burying the Lead. And yes, it's spelled L-E-D-E. So let's go get the manuscript first. This is the written uh, version that I'm working from. And so this is Burying the Lead by Joseph Lavalle. And I'm going to upload this to the site by simply clicking on the Create button. So it uploads the file. It happens to be a PDF, so it's really, really fast. So now we have Burying the Lead. And if I click on Burying the Lead, I now am being presented with a screen that says, hey, drag and drop your audio files here to upload automatically. I can also click on that, and I will go back up into the hierarchy here. Let me go back to Joseph Lavalle. Where are you there? Uh, There we go, Joseph Lavalle. And then in my wave files, I just finished doing a few chapters. I want to start with chapter two. I've actually already done chapter one. I used Positron to correct all the errors. So I'm going to open up chapter two. It's going to upload it and we'll wait for it to upload 108 megabytes worth of audio. And maybe 30 seconds later, we're just about at the end of the upload. It's just about finished. And when it's finished, it will then show that it's part of this process. It also processes for it. Uh, The book is going to process. And when we're done, we're going to be able to actually marry these two together. So let's wait for it to take a look at the WAV file and the actual uh, manuscript takes a bit of time to do it, maybe a few minutes, but what it's doing is it's transcoding what is in the audio into what it can recognize as a an audio file. I actually don't know what format they use, but they take the WAV file that we've uploaded and transcode it into something else. And then there are four more steps that actually uh, are involved in this process. The second step is processing the audio to get it ready to marry with the script. And this is kind of a long step. This could take a few minutes, depending upon how long your audio is. This is about a 21 and a half minute long piece, and it probably takes about five minutes to do this step. And then step three, it's now processing the text. It's getting it all in shape so it can marry it up with the audio as well. 
And then in step four, it begins the proofing process. This is where it's comparing the audio with the manuscript and finding all kinds of things that you might miss, including things that are, to the world of narration, unique. Uh, in everyday language, you might say that is is the same as that's, you know, contractions versus the separate words. But when you're narrating an audiobook, as you know, that's not the case. And so it's looking for things like that. It's looking for double words. It's looking for all kinds of things. And that's what it's doing in the proofing right now. And when it's done with that, it is done. And basically, you're looking now at a finished file ready to go and to look at. And as you can see, it found 18 annotations. So let's open the proofing and find out what I'm in for. So it shows you the script. And then on the left-hand side here, there are um, the annotations, the 18 annotations, errors that it found, or things that it found that you might want to check. And for each one, you have three options. You can say, oh, no, this is not an error. That's what I meant to say. Or it's minor enough that it's not a fix. Like maybe you missed that I slid into a, a word or something like that. Or it is something that you need to fix. So in this case, it says, please check that the audio starts at the beginning of your chapter. That's not something that I need to fix because I know my silences are correct. So I'm going to mark that as not an error. So the next one here, it says pause detected 2.7 seconds. That's not an error either because that's the space between chapter two, when I say chapter two and the beginning, which is actually ACX's standard. So I'm going to mark that as not an error. But the next one is aisle and it's down here. It says I'll bet. And all I have to do to actually hear what I said was click on it and note that it moves me to that space on the timeline about a minute and 42 in, and all I have to do is hit play. I bet there's more than one good story there, Tony. Okay, so it caught that I said, I bet there's one more good story there. Let's try it one more time. I can put my cursor anywhere and start playing from that point. I bet there's more than one good, yeah, I'm gonna say that's an error. So I'm gonna mark that as need to fix. The next one, let's go to the next one and see what it says. Pause detected, 2.2 seconds. That's okay. Notice this is an actual space where the pause should be 2.2 seconds or so. So I'm going to mark that as not an error and move to the next one. What does it say here? Where's my next one? Let's see. Uh, okay, let's, let's play this and see what happens. It says inserted, word inserted year evening during Tony's sophomore year in high school. Ah, as he... His mother and his sister were eating pasta and salads at the kitchen table. So I don't know what would go in there, but I can go to the manuscript and see what it says. Let's see. Where is that? Tony and Rita. Uh, yeah, okay. So event during Tony's sophomore what in high school? And I actually corrected that for the author. It looks to me like there's a word missing here. The event that most changed their, both their lives occurred one evening during Tony's sophomore in high school. It should be sophomore year. So I'm just going to mark that as not an error as being inserted properly. See how it, it handles all these different situations? It's looking for something. It uses pronunciation. It uses syntax. It uses double. It looks for double words. It looks for contractions. Let's see what happens when I'm saying the bedroom. All right, let's see what did I say here. He and Rita each had a bathroom on the second floor. Yep, made a mistake. So I'm going to mark this as a need to fix error. And then right down here is the next one. Uh, let's see what this one is. Let's see what I said here. Catholic high school. He had decided to stay. Got it. So I should have said he decided to stay. So I'm going to mark this as need to fix as well. And as you can see, I can work all the way through all of the errors that it found. Now, if I had done this myself, likely I would not have, uh, I would not have found some of the things that I said because that's what I saw when I read it and that's what I said when I saw what I read. So I'm going to go through all of these. I don't need to show you uh, the, the, uh, the nature of uh, correcting all these. And I'll get the ones that I need to do, and then I'll come back here, and I'll show you which ones uh, are done. I'll be at the bottom and be at the end. So hang on one second. Let me take care of business. 
All right, so I am finished here. I just wrapped up the last few things. I needed to record some. Most of them were just simply uh, moments of silence that it detected, but that were part of ACX's requirements. So let's go back to the project page. And now that it's all finished, it says all checked. We have six pickups out of those 18. Let's download what's called the pickup packet. When we download that pickup packet, it's so cool. Uh, we can download a number of different things, um, but the proofing report, the narrator proof sheet, uh, book full text. But what we really want is the pickup packet. And we want it to be relative to the start of each audio file rather than to the start of the entire project. That way we can get chapter by chapter reports on what we're doing. And the narration content, we want the current sentence. That's all well, and these are the standards. So I'm just going to download this. And notice it downloads here. Uh, basically, once it's done, it's actually pretty quick because what it's downloading is a list. Uh, let's show it in the Finder. Uh, it's in my uh, it's in my Downloads folder. But I'm going to drag it into my Project folder that I have on my hard drive for the project itself. Now, when I double click on this, when I open this zip file, something really cool is going to be shown. See this index.html file right here? It's just index.html. That's actually a web page. And these MP3s are the audio of all the things that I need to fix in their, in their current state. So they're not in the corrected state, obviously, because I haven't corrected them. But watch what happens. If I go over here and I choose a new tab and I just drag this document onto my browser, it opens up this beautiful locally produced web page that shows all of the errors that I need to fix. And it shows the copy that I need to read. So if I play this, I'll hear my original. Tony decided he would walk over to the square one day soon and get to know them. I bet there's more than one good story there, Tony. Th okay. So that's the deal. I, I need to say, I'll bet. Now here's one more thing that you download that's really, really cool. I'm going to drop this menu again for the import-export, and I'm going to export DAW markers. And what that means is digital audio workstation markers. And it creates DAW markers for any uh, application you might be using. And we use Audacity, and it creates them for Audacity and Reaper and Audition and Pro Tools. We want Audacity, and we want it relative to the start of each audio file once again. So these DAW markers are really cool. Watch what happens when I download these DAW markers. We open this up, we show it. It's a very short file, it's just a text file. We'll show it in the downloads folder. We'll drag it over into the uh, Burying the Lead project folder that I have on my hard drive. And when I unzip this, what I get is a text file. And if I show you the preview of this text file, it's very short. There's six lines, and each one of those lines is an error. And watch what happens. I'm going to go over to uh, Audacity. This is the original WAV file that I pulled in. This is what I recorded. This has all the errors in it. But watch what happens if I go up here to the file menu and choose Import, and then choose Labels. I'm going to go to my uh, Burying the Lead folder, Positron Packet. There is that text file that I talked about, Chapter 2, Burying the Lead text. Watch what happens when I open it. Oh, look. It's all of my corrections placed exactly in the track where I need them to be time-wise, right? So uh, let's go into this in a little bit more detail. I'm going to zoom in on the very first one that I've got. Now, one thing that you want to pay attention to is I'm going to actually do all of my pickups from left to right. And the way to do that, we, we've told you in the past to do your pickups from um, uh, the end of the track to the beginning because if you happen to have to delete something and you're doing it from left to right, if you delete this, watch what happens to the label where the error is. It stays where it is, but the other audio is removed. And so now all of those errors are mistimed. But with this, with this marker track and with the audio track here, if I go to the tracks menu and I choose either lock tracks or sync lock tracks, it depends on what version 
of Audacity you're using. Now, if I delete something, notice that it's it's locked to the bottom track and it's going to delete that part as well and all of the timing will stay the same. Let me undo that. Let me let me just hear what's going on here. I bet there's more than one good story there, Tony thought. All right. Let's do a pickup on that. Do new. And it's I'll bet there's more than one good story there. Let me play it one more time just so that I know what I said. I bet there's more than one good story there, Tony thought. I'll bet there's more than one good story there, Tony thought. All right, I think that's pretty good. I'm going to grab that, copy it. And then I'm going to go back over here. I'm going to grab this and paste it in. Let's hear how that goes. Get to know them. I'll bet there's more than one good story there, Tony thought but not today. So it looks pretty good. I like that. And I'll move on to the next one. I can just move on down the line uh, to wherever the next uh, pickup is. These, the bathroom one and all that. So that's how easy this all is for Positron. And the good news is, is we've worked out a deal for you. Uh, When you start with Positron and you go to their pricing They give you a free one-hour trial when you sign up. Now, one hour is okay. You can do a few chapters. But I went to them and I said, look, my people are professionals. My people are doing this for a living or a hefty side hustle. I want more. Can you do anything for me? And they said, yeah, sure, we can. And they came back with something that I was personally blown away from. Instead of one-hour free trial, six hours. You can do an entire medium-length book when you try it for free, but don't go to Positron.com. Instead, go to the link that is showing on your screen right now that ends in get-positron. You go there, and you're not only going to get the free six hours, but you're also going to be given options that are less expensive than $9 per finished hour. Now, $9 per finished hour is pretty good. That'd be uh, the, the finished hour, the, the thing that we just did was 21 minutes long. That would be about three bucks to be able to, uh, create a really nice error free item to send off to your rights holder or your producer or your publisher or whoever you're working for. Um, but you're getting, you're getting, uh, six hours and the programs that they have for you as well are less expensive than $9 per finished hour. Depends on what you pick. So go to the uh, URL on the screen that ends in get-positron and check it out. Uh, It's absolutely free. You can do probably an entire book with the trial that that we negotiated for you. Um, And that's what I do when I want to look my best, and I've made it part of my stack. Again, it's optional, but it's very highly recommended. I hope this helps. I'm David H. Lawrence, the 17th. I thank you so much for watching and for listening, and I'll see you soon.